Hello, my name is Robin Mitchell and welcome to this episode for Electromaker. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the brand new Raspberry Pi Pico W and how it can be used for future IoT projects. So before we can jump into using the Raspberry Pi Pico W, we first need to know what it is. Now, the Raspberry Pi Pico W is exactly the same as a Pico, except that it adds a Wi-Fi module. Now, the reason why this is quite useful is for two main reasons. The first one being that the Wi-Fi module allows you to do internet connected projects such as Wi-Fi or maybe something like remote control. But the fact that it's still the same as the Pico means that it's backward compatible. So you can upgrade your older Pico projects without needing to make any hardware or software changes. Now at the heart of the Raspberry Pi Pico W, just like the Pico, is the RP2040 microcontroller, an ARM core microcontroller with 133 megahertz CPU and I think 256 kilobytes of static RAM for program, space and data variables. Now the really cool thing about this board is that when you connect it to a computer, it's recognized as a flash drive and that is how you program it. You don't need a special header, you don't need any kind of USB to serial uh, sort of like module that you connect to it like you would with the ESP32 or the Arduino. You just connect it to your computer, it appears as a flash drive and you transfer the files that you want across to it and then it runs those files. So with regards to hardware, just like the Pico, the Pico W has a micro USB connector for programming and communication. It has all the GPIO on the outside in two dual lines. This makes it compatible with breadboards, which are extremely maker friendly. And that also means you can solder pin headers onto this, plug it into a breadboard and then use wires. So you can keep using the same Pico W in multiple projects. Now, just like the Pico, it also has the same mounting holes in the same positions, so this will still fit in enclosures for the Pico, which again makes it excellent for backwards compatibility. And while the Wi-Fi module does stand tall off the PCB, it's actually shallower than the micro USB connector. This means this will fit in the same enclosures as the Pico, assuming that you haven't used this area for something else. So the Pico W overall is a Wi-Fi version of the Raspberry Pi Pico. It's PIN compatible, it is software compatible, and an excellent upgrade to previously existing Pico projects. Now with regards to programming language, the Raspberry Pi Pico W has, I think, three different options currently supported, C, C++, and MicroPython. Now C and C++ make excellent choices when you're trying to create a project that needs maximum performance, Maybe you're doing something like vision processing or maybe you're doing something like large data processing. In those cases, C and C++ make sense. But if you're making a more of a DIY project and you're not trying to do anything too advanced, MicroPython is an excellent choice. And there are two main reasons I would say that MicroPython is an excellent choice. The first one being that MicroPython is just a version of Python that runs on microcontrollers and is incredibly simple to use. It's easy to program in and there are many, many libraries that support it. So a lot of complex functions and features are simplified into basic functions. And that's really nice when you're trying to do a Wi-Fi project. The second reason why MicroPython is quite a nice language to use with the Raspberry Pi Pico W is that it runs the script file itself. It doesn't need to compile it. You will write on maybe something like a text editor, the Python program you want this thing to run. You just transfer that file onto here directly. There's no need for a compiler, no need for an SDK. There's no need for things like linkers or libraries or any kind of, only those horrible things that you, you sort of have to deal with in C and C++. I absolutely hate that with a passion. I mean, the Arduino IDE does a good job of that, but a lot of platforms out there expect you to download your own IDE and then link that to your compiler and then you have to start pointing to paths and using terminal lines. It, it, just, gets, it just gets silly. Basically, MicroPython just absolutely simplifies your projects, so much so that in about five seconds you can write a basic Hello World program, download it and run it to see the results. Now you may be thinking that the Raspberry Pi Pico W is only suitable for maker projects and DIY stuff, but you would be wrong. It turns out that this guy has been designed to also work with commercial projects. So on the edge of the PCB are these holes which you use to connect pin headers to, but then there are these half cut holes and I believe these are pronounced as castellated holes. Essentially, they're plated on the outside and the inside so that you can directly attach this to a PCB pad and then solder it in. So this would make a very nice low profile microcontroller board with Wi-Fi capabilities in a commercial device. 
So now we've seen what the Raspberry Pi Pico W actually is, let's see how we can upgrade the firmware so we can start making our MicroPython projects. So I want to demonstrate how easy it is to install new firmware onto your Raspberry Pi Pico W, and I'm going to try and do this in one take without making any cuts. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and get the firmware file itself. So on the uh, browser here, I'm on the raspberrypi.com forward slash documentation forward slash microcontrollers. I scroll down the page to where it says MicroPython. I click that. And on this page, I scroll down until I see these two links here where it says download the correct MicroPython UF2 file for your board. Now we've got the W, so we go ahead and download Raspberry Pi Pico W and we get the file downloading. Now it's time to connect this guy to the computer. So if we don't just connect it, we have to hold down the boot select button first. So we hold that down, put it in, release. And if we go onto our computer, we can see that it's appeared as a flash drive. We double click that, so we've opened it up. We drag the firmware file across like that it automatically uh, uploads it, reboots, and in just a few seconds, the firmware will be installed. Just like that. So the development environment that I use with the Raspberry Pi Pico W is funny, and there are several reasons. The first one is that I can select the MicroPython as a target in the bottom right here. Secondly, I can use this console down here to test out Python functions. I can write my Python code here, and then I can save directly to the Pico without having to make any sort of access to files or anything. It will handle all of that for us. So let's demonstrate. We start by plugging our Raspberry Pi Pico W into the computer. The computer recognizes it. We go down to the bottom right, and we can select from here, MicroPython. If you try and connect to your device and you get this error message here saying that your device is busy, it's probably because your Raspberry Pi Pico W is running some other script. So to stop that, we can just click the stop button here and it causes the device to reboot and we get the console here. So we can go ahead and test some Python code such as this. And just like that, the Python engine on our device is running correctly. We can also write some programs in the editor here. And then when we come to save it, it will ask us where we want to save it. Now you could do it onto your computer, but you can do it directly to the Raspberry Pi like so. And just like that, it is now running our script. So I can go ahead and click run and we can see that it comes through. So to demonstrate the power of MicroPython, we are going to look at a basic web server running on a Raspberry Pi Pico W, all in just 36 lines of code, including white space. The nice function names, along with the few amounts of code needed to get something very, very complex running, is why MicroPython is a fantastic language to use. So as we can see, the first two libraries we include are networks and sockets. The networking library is used to connect to Wi-Fi, while the socket library is used for TCP connections. These two variables here are SSID and password, which are used to connect to our Wi-Fi network. And here we create a WLAN object, which is just handling the Wi-Fi connection itself. We pass the SSID and the password to it, as well as turning it on. And then here, we get socket address info. And this is just creating an address object, which will then pass to our socket down here. Basically, all of this code here is connecting us to the Wi-Fi, starting a server, and listening for devices. Finally, we have the infinite loop here, and all we do is just keep trying to accept new connections. Here, we accept a new connection, we print its address, we receive any data from it, and we can print that request that has been sent to the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Then, we're just going to respond with the word hello, and then close the connection. And should any errors occur, we can just go ahead and close the socket. So now let's see what happens when we connect to this Raspberry Pi Pico W over the LAN. Now you can find the IP address of your device in numerous ways. You can go to your router and see what it's connected as, or you could write a little function in here that just returns the IP address that it's been assigned to. Now I know that mine is 192.168.1.163. So we go ahead and type that in, 192.168.1.163. We hit enter 
And as we can see, we get the response, hello. And that has been generated from the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Even though we only looked at one Wi-Fi example, I feel that that example alone demonstrates the power of MicroPython and the new Pico W. So you've got a board that's small, lightweight, has an additional Wi-Fi capability, backwards compatible, and maker friendly and prototyping friendly. And for me, that just makes the Raspberry Pi Pico W an absolute sell. So if you're interested in the Raspberry Pi Pico W and you wanna get your hands on one, visit our store on the Electromaker website. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.